every single day for my investors to hear the fact that no one cares about the social issue. Yes, you're doing it, but you can do it for cheaper, what you're doing for cheaper. So again, it left me quite empty. I sold the company and I moved on. Fast forward more than 10 years, and that's where my third story begins. But before I start my third story, I would like to pause. What you heard from me so far is the fact that the quest of making my perception of what I thought businesses could do seemed to actually be a reality. But obviously, it was difficult. And people told me, well, it can't be done when we do these, you know, use, think of all these beautiful management theories that there are, this just cannot be done, we don't give up. But for me, that was even the bigger challenge to really say, do I give up and just accept the fact that companies can do whatever they want and then they think they can just give some money to charity and that's good enough? Or the companies can do whatever they want and tell their employees, you know what, we're doing something good, so be happy. What's that really enough? For me, it wasn't. So I actually said, I'm going to do something more. But even before we do go into what I actually did 10 years later, I want you to have some reality check. I need a bit of talk here. I want you to think about the world the way it's made this day. If this room was the globe, the six billion people who live on this planet, okay, all of you here are some six billion people. As for the statistics, about 40% of you, which is really almost all of you, live day to day without any sanitation. You don't have a bathroom to use, okay? Basic need. About 15% of you, say, move over here, you actually went to bed without food. And even tonight, you don't know where food is coming from. And I would say about more than half of the group are living in less than five minutes a day. So this is the reality. And so each one of you, what role they gave you, and the time it took for me to say what I'm saying to you about five children died from a disease which could have been curable, and two women died during childbirth or some pregnancy related issue. So this is this is the this is the world we're living in. Okay? So I think it's always easy for us to forget all this given that we're living in a beautiful city like Florida or Singapore and New York or and it does not stop with just the social side. And once again, I like to say that the people say we are from Bangladesh and we are you know, closer to all this, but yes, I am. But the reality is there's more to it which actually affects you day to day. And that's what is the environment. If you look at the environment today, and if um, this page, say it represents the ozone layer. With all our consumption, and all the businesses have done, and the way they're operating, we have actually already, I would say more than that, 60% ozone layer gone. Just gone. By just how we are operating day to day. Now, let's look at forests. Well, half of them are gone. This is what we're dealing with. We've cut down the trees, we're doing more care, we're making our beautiful houses, we're running successful companies. And we look at our oceans, we like to eat well now, and all of us like to eat sushi. 75% of the marine life gone. So this is what we left on. So this is basically the world. This is the world that we have created with a lot of wealth, with a lot of consumption, which has been taking shape to void of anything else around it. So this is the world we created, this is the world we live in. And this is the world where we have to all live, not only the poor, but also the rich. Now interestingly, this is all not sort of a sad story, and that's I guess what makes this uh, world a place to live, because we are 
creatures of optimism. Human beings are the most optimistic beings on this planet, and that's why we have innovation. And that's what I'm going to hear talk about, which is the whole notion of social enterprises, which are companies which are doing good for this world, by actually making it be done in a sustainable way. So these are companies which in their core, in their DNA, have the goal to do social and environmental good. So these are companies called social enterprises. So these are companies which are mission-driven for profit or market-driven not for profit companies. And these social enterprises, interestingly, they span across sectors. They can be in media, they can be in microfinance, they can be loans to the poor, they can be actually in, in sanitation, they can be in water purification, you name it. There are thousands and thousands and thousands of companies. We are working with a lot of them. And these are the companies which are the hope of the future, and they are the ones was starting a movement where these companies would then take over the world and every company in the world would be a social enterprise. Now, interestingly, over the last 10 years or so, while this movement of social enterprise has been happening, and trust me, imagine my first company on Nest, the more you knew what social enterprise was. So when people ask me, so you're a social entrepreneur, and like, oh, yes, I am. Um, because, you know, there's all the cool things, right? You ask the cool things, I don't know, so far and more. Uh, which is good. I mean, all of us actually do things for the world. I mean, it's a good place to be in. Now, as this has been happening, there has been also investors, interestingly, people who are waking up to the fact that we need to do more than just make money, who are saying, you know what? Maybe we'll put in money in these companies and actually see if we can grow them and help them grow their impact. Now, it's always interesting, you know, the banks, uh, and I can say it because I was part of the system, um, they only get interested in something when they can smell money. So, um, interestingly, JP Morgan recently did this report on, uh, on social enterprises, so you know now they can smell money, um, which actually said that the whole sector, if you, if you actually add up, it actually is worth now about $1 trillion. So they are enough money out there, in the next five years, the sector where about $1 trillion can go in. And these are all from institutional investors, from funds, from high net worth individuals, and even. Now the interesting thing is you have $1 trillion, uh, which is ready to deploy into these companies, like Energia, you know, which is uh, purifying water, waste water, or Bauda, which is working with microfinance, and women in South India, you know, with this uh, entities like uh, Prasad and Cambodia, you name it. So all of them, they can take money and grow and grow and help to make this world a better place. Now, slight problem, how do we get that money to them? So there's one trillion dollars that needs to be deployed, and what you see now, with some of the funds and some of the direct investment that's happening, is really dropped in the bucket. So how do we get that money out there? Now, this is where my training comes in handy. Now this is a this is a picture of some very old buildings. And uh, this is a picture of some very old buildings actually that house the world's first stock exchange. So the world's first stock exchange started in Belgium in the 1400s, so it's about 800 years ago. And it was started by a group of men who came together to actually create liquidity for their commodities trading. Now, I always like to say this, the fact that you know, stock markets for 800 years have been doing nothing else than just to make money, and more money, and more money. And it was, as I said, a group of men started. Um, now, 800 years later, a group of men and women, we need the women in the equation, where basically we're taking social enterprises and in fact investors, because the investors who care about the triple bottom line, and we have created two companies who basically deploy capital into the sector. Now how are we doing this? So we have impact investment studio, 
to bring us a money word for opportunity. So this company works with the social enterprises to get them ready to actually assess the impacts they're having and get them up on the market to be ready to absorb capital. An impact investment exchange is a platform for actually for providing liquidity to these companies. Now, let's go a little further, which is the impact investment exchange, or the graphic didn't come up very well there. The impact investment exchange, we actually have two platforms, because as we started creating it, we realized that there was such a demand, we actually need to create two platforms. So we created the first platform, which you see, which is Impact Partners. So Impact Partners is focused on raising capital, small cap capital, for social enterprises. So you can raise up to $10 million in Impact Partners. And that is something which is called a private placement platform for those of you who are in finance. And as we're doing it, we're also creating a public trading platform, which is called Impact Exchange. And Impact Exchange is, uh, while well, Impact Partners is the first in Asia um, of its kind, Impact Exchange also will be the first in the world um, as a basically a stock exchange for social enterprises. And uh, that's shifting the shape in Singapore. So we're very happy to do something about it. And our reach so far, we have social enterprises from over uh, 15 countries. And we have investors from all over the globe. And currently, as of yesterday, we have on the platform over $56 million that has been raised. So think of the magnitude of it. This is something that is not there. This is an opportunity for social enterprises to be able to raise capital from investors who actually care about the mission and can actually put a value to the social and the environment impact that they're creating. Now, again, coming in the full circle, perception versus reality. Yes, I had a perception that I could actually see how capital markets could change the world and do social good. Yes, I had hiccups. I actually perhaps did not see it happening the direct way I wanted to. But then you know what I did? I did not change my reality or my perception. I actually made my own reality and basically made my perception happen. And that is where my secret came in, which is the fact that capital markets can do social good. And you can turn your perception into reality. And this is where, I guess, for us today, for TEDx, which we have to talk about having a secret. So the secret is, of course, capital markets can do social good. And that is my secret in turning perception into a reality and reality into a perception. Ladies and gentlemen, I am the king of this world, the African Thank you very much.